Well, the second classifier that we're going to cover in this series is DNN phase detector in OpenCV. DNN basically means deep neural network. So this model of deep neural network was included from version 3.3. It's a single shot multi-box detector and uses ResNet 10 as the architecture backbone. So the network that it uses is called ResNet. ResNet is short form for residual neural networks. I have actually covered the entire ResNet research paper as well as implementation from scratch in a series that is linked below. It is one of the most used, most famous, most common architecture in the in all of the state of the art models in the industry today. So if you're really interested in computer vision and deep learning, you must know ResNet. So it's linked below. Now this model was trained from the image on the web and the and the source is not disclosed. Now OpenCV provides two models for phase detection, two DNN based models. The first is floating point 16 version, the original cafe version and 8-bit quantized version using TensorFlow. So 8-bit quantized version basically means that 16-bit numbers were converted into 8 bits to squeeze the model to a smaller size, but we will use the original cafe implementation. Now for that, we need to download that pre-trained model, which we have already downloaded in a model file in the model folder. So I'll name this function detect DNN, the model file and the configuration file. Configuration file is basically the size of the layers and all of that in a, in a text file. So to load this model, you just have to call cv2.dnn.read from cafe, the configuration file and the model file. Again, we will read this image, convert, the, convert it into RGB <laughs> now we'll calculate the height and width of the frame and I will basically <coughs> resize the frame. Now blob is now blob is basically uh, the blob is basically the image, the processed image so that it can be the processed image in a form that it can be set as an input of the network. So to do that we just need to just to just process the image we just need to call this function blob from image to create a blob from the image just have to resize our image to a desired size we are using 300 by 300 so that the image is not too large because we are using CPU open CPU uses CPU so just cv2 dot resize the frame to 300 by 300 and these are all scale size and this last part well you, you can always read the recommend uh, the you can always read the documentation about all of what all of these functions are doing but I'll just explain you what this is because this really seems random numbers these are not random what happens is you need to normalize an image or normalize the channels of the image, the RGB, the RGB channels. So these are the normalization factors. Now why this particular normalization factors? Because all of the models that are trained, that are pre-trained, they normalize the training data to a particular value and this is that particular value. This is easily available on the internet. This is a standard normalization factors used by almost all of these models. So it is just the normalization factor. So we'll just normalize this image so that we can input this into the network. Finally, we will set input as the blob and detections. Now what, how do we get the detection? Just call network.forward. Forward basically stands for forward propagation. So to calculate an output from a network, it's called forward propagation. To calculate the gradients to train the network, we use backward propagation. So detection. So once we have the detections, we need to extract the useful information from that. So it's a four, the detection, the output of the network is four layered, four dimensional matrix. So from that, we only need the last two dimensions. Now for, for other details about what these dimensions are, you can just read the documentation. These apply for all of these, these apply for all of the object detector, detectors. So these are common to all of the object detectors. These are how they return the output. Now, in that, we need only the last two dimensions. So the last two dimensions are, let me just quickly write this down because it's really important to understand that, to understand the, the everything, to understand everything that's going on. So we don't need the first two dimensions. The last two dimension contains the first, the third dimension contains the number of detections made. So number of, let me just write this on number of detections. And by the way, this, this second dimension basically means uh, this in this particular frame, there are multiple frames passed into it. 
this particular frame so here we are only using one frame so that is irrelevant and the first dimension again is irrelevant number of detections the last dimension basically means that the first again is it consists of seven values the first value is the class id and the class core which is none of our business right now and the second is confidence score which means the probability that this particular object this particular bounding box contains any object which is confidence and the next four are the coordinates x y height and width so all of these things that we need to use the last the last uh, dimension so but first we need to loop over all the detections made so number of detections is the third dimension which is the shape of the second index so we'll just loop over that now we'll extract the confidence of the first the confidence of each of the detection space so that is the third index uh, the second index of the last dimension which basically is confidence so here you extract confidence of this ith detection now if the confidence is more than 0.5 this is again an arbitrary number if you want to use that so generally 0.5 is preferred so if the probability is more than 0.5 it means that it has a some object now once the probability is greater than 0.5 you extract the coordinates of the bounding box that is from 3 to 7 and multiply it by the width and height of this image to scale it back so the bounding boxes are so the bounding box output are the coordinates of the image which has been processed. To convert that back into its same dimension with respect to the original image we just have to multiply it with an array of height and width to just do that. And now we have got the start x. Now we have got the starting index x, starting index y, ending index x and ending index y of these bounding boxes. Just convert that to integer and then form a text just calculate all of that and just write it out in just write it out just draw the bounding box using the coordinates and just simply put a text on the box now finally let's just execute this so this is the data and let's execute this works on almost real time now let's just see the performance so the first image right here it performs really well it detects more than one value so but I think it's it's. Well, I think detecting none is detecting two is better than detecting none. So well, I'll just give it a pass. Now here it detects all four faces. Now if you have seen the previous part where I have used hard casket classifiers, it couldn't detect any of the image any of the faces from this image. So this is clearly an improvement over that. Now here it detects two of the big faces on the background but it couldn't detect any of the smaller faces which are the ones that we were interested in but anyway an improvement we'll go ahead and here it detects all four faces and if you remember clearly the previous hard classifier classifier couldn't detect ruffalo face now in here it detects one face which again is an improvement but it's quite unimpressive that is not the intention so as you can see it works in real time it's good it's better than hard casket classifier but we can do a lot better but before that let's just run this on a video the same syntax we'll just first let me just remove the video writer because i'm not going to write an output so i'll just remove this these two lines or i'll just keep them and make them just comment them out so that you can have this and you you have you will have this link to this you will have the link to this notebook as a reference as the you know as, as a go-to guide for detection in the in the link below so you can just check that out we we'll just remove this and so everything is just same just our source here is a video instead of an image so we'll just load the video and while true which means while we have this running <laughs> let's just execute that and i have the frame is ready detection let me just open this up as you can see this is not in the real time so it is quite slow but even even though it's running on cpu so it it, it shows 
really good results. So as you can see, it is detecting the faces. Now this face was easily detected by Harkaska classifier, but it couldn't detect at this point where the face is really small. So Harkaska classifier needs a really large face and also the face should be prominent the most prominent part of the image so as you can see the probability has decreased now and it has gone below 50 percent so it is not saying that this is a face now you can just change that if your probability if you can set the probability to 40 percent it will detect much better images so i just just close this and i'll just yeah okay <coughs> oh i just have this messed up here anyway I guess I should have the output here already. Output DNN, maybe. I'll just show you this. Yeah, so I've already saved the output. So as you can see, this one is in real time. So it detects faces at even odd angles. So I'll just show you some of the examples. So now it is not detecting faces, any of these faces right now. So again, we can see that this is something that we can improve upon. So in the next in the next section we'll of course do that so it is not detecting the faces always like right here i'm just there's this scene where both of the faces are visible from an angle uh, let me just see okay so faces are prominent prominent so right here her face is not detected which is which should be detected because it's clearly visible so we can improve upon this a lot. So we'll do that in the next section. But, but before that, this is a real time code that you can use. So I just kept it here. Now pros and cons. The pros is it's the most accurate out of four methods when using a CPU. So I have on CPU, when using CPU, I'll just edit that. Works almost real time on CPU, almost real time. And it works on different face orientations up, down, left, and right. It works under substantial occlusion, detects faces across various scales. Now, the only now the cons are there's only one con that is not very accurate, right? It's fast enough, but it's not accurate, so you cannot use it always. Now again. What are the use cases? Well, let's just say you have just a CPU and you have to work with that. So on CPU, I guess it's the best method. So because it can work on real time in CPU. Again, on edge devices, if you have a really powerful edge device like a Raspberry Pi with some powerful hardware, you can use this. So this is one of the use cases. So I guess you understood everything about this. Now we, we have already come halfway through. Two of the most, most famous detectors. You already know about two of the most famous detectors. Now in the next section, we'll look into some more.